Hi everyone, in this lesson I'd like to uh, look at how to simplify radicals where you have different indices. For example, I have the fourth root of a cubed times the cube root of a squared. Well, if those indices were the same, if I had, you know, the, the, the square root of a cubed times the square root of a squared. I could put those under the same radical, right? That would just be the square root of a to the fifth and I could simplify them. But here I have different indices and I don't have a rule for that. So all I can do is think of these in terms of their corresponding uh, rational exponents, fractional exponents, and then use my rules of exponents to simplify them. So I'm going to uh, rewrite this as a to the three-fourths power. Remember that the the root is the denominator when you write it as a as a uh, fractional exponent and then the power is the numerator so I got a to the three-fourths times a to the two-thirds alright now if I had a cubed times a squared you know that you'd add those exponents right so that's all I have to do here I'll just add these exponents I know this is gonna give me a to the three-fourths plus two-thirds. And I left a little room so I could get a common denominator. I'll multiply here by 3 over 3 and here by 4 over 4. So this is going to give me a to the 9 plus 8. That would be the 17 twelfths power. Now since it started out as a radical, I want to end it as a radical as well. So I'm going to think of this as a to the 1 plus 5 twelfths, okay? The 1 and 5 twelfths power. So I can rewrite this as a times a to the 5 twelfths. I want my fraction to be a proper fraction when I'm all done, and so I can rewrite this now as a times the 12th root of a to the fifth power. So you see why I didn't want to leave that as 17 twelfths. Uh, I can deal with uh, uh, simplifying that by by dividing here to start off um, as right 17 twelfths is 1 and 5 twelfths. So I got a to the 1 plus 5 twelfths. Remember I'd add these exponents here. So I can just leave the a out front here and then have the twelfth root of a to the fifth. Okay. Let's do something like that on this one. I've got the square root of uh, 2x cubed y cubed times the cube root of 4xy squared. So I'm going to write this as 2 to the 1 half power, x to the 3 halves power, y to the 3 halves power, and then over here I've got 4. Now I'm going to think of that 4 as 2 squared. Let's uh, simply because I see I have a base of 2 over here as well. So I've got 2 squared, and that's to the 1 third power. And I've got an x to the 1 third power. And I'll have a y to the 2 thirds power. So now let's combine our bases. This is going to give me 2 to the 1 half plus, and then this is going to be 2 thirds. In fact, let me rewrite it this way. Let me do that in an additional step. I'll just leave it as 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 2 thirds. And then I've got x to the 3 halves uh, times x to the 1 third. And y to the 3 halves times y to the 2 thirds. Okay, so you see I'm going to just add my exponents here. This is going to give me 2 to the 1 half plus 2 thirds. I'm just going to leave some space here so I can get my common denominator and then I'll get x to the 3 halves plus 1 third and I'll have y to the 3 halves plus 2 thirds. So let's get our common denominator. Let's multiply here by 3 over 3 and 2 over 2 3 over 3 and 2 over 2 alright so this is going to give me 2. I'll get 3 plus 4 is 7, 6. And x to the 9 plus 2, that's 11, 6. And y to the 9 plus 4, that's 13, 6. All right. Now I'm going to write this 
think of seven sixes as uh, one and one six. So I'm going to write this as two times two to the one six. So here's the one and here's the one six. And I'll have x times x to the five six, right? Eleven six is one and five six. If I add one to five six, I'll get eleven six. And I'll think of this last one as y squared times y to the one six, right? Because thirteen six is two and one six. So then I can write my final answer. I'm going to have a two, and I'll have an x, and I'll have a y squared, and then all of these other ones is going to be a sixth root of just two to the first power, x to the fifth power, and y to the first power. So that's how I'd simplify that problem. Let's do a division problem as well before we finish up this topic. I would want to think of, of this. I have the fifth root of an expression over the cube root. So let's write this as a to the four fifths, b to the one fifth, divided by a to the one third, b to the one third. Okay? So uh, I can subtract those exponents. This would be a to the four fifths minus one third and b to the one fifth minus one third. So let's get a common denominator. I'll multiply here by three over three and five over five. Same thing for these fractions. So this is going to give me a twelve minus five is seven fifteenths and b to the 3 minus 5, that's a negative 2 fifteenths. Alright, so I could write this as a to the 7 fifteenths over b to the 2 fifteenths, and then as a radical I could write this as the 15th root of a to the 7th over b squared. Okay, now uh, I think the answer in the back of the book, they might have left it like that. Or, uh, if we wanted to go ahead and rationalize this denominator, just to make it uh, uh, cross all of our t's and dot our i's, uh, I'd have to multiply here by something that would make the denominator a perfect 15th root. So, uh, if I wanted to take this an additional step, I'd multiply by b to the 13th over b to the 13th, and that would then give me the fifteenth root in the numerator of a to the seventh b to the thirteenth and in the denominator I'd get the fifteenth root of b to the fifteenth which would just be a b. Okay? So this would probably be the, the, the best answer, the very best answer, although I think that maybe the answers in the back of the book are left like that for one like this.